I will call to order the October 23rd, 2024 meeting of the Cal Cemetery Commission at 6.28 p.m. Michael Fullerton, Chair, our daily member, Sage Kennedy, Secretary, Sherry Fitch, member, our Sexton, Joe Mangan, cannot be here tonight. Or one Right. So the first item on the agenda is to any changes to the agenda. Hearing none, uh, approve the minutes of the October 2nd meeting. Everybody read those? I did, yep. Good, I wrote them. Any changes or additions? Hearing none, then I will say that the uh, entertain a motion to improve, improve, approve. Boy, I'm in rare, rare form tonight. Approve those minutes. A motion? Uh, make a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Opposed? All right. So we approve the meetings. I will see to it that they get posted. We had a warrant to sign that has been done. There will be no sections report. The uh, Spruce Tree at the Fairview Cemetery. It's agreed by the section that that tree should come down. He was going to charge us to do it. I talked to the highway department and Carrie said that they don't have time to do it now. It's not a roads issue, but if in the late fall, early winter, they have time, they'll go and cut it down. It won't cost us anything. Carrie is here, by the way, just so you know. Yeah, so there shouldn't be any problem there. Hello. Oh. Hey, there he is. Yay. Oh, Thanks hey. for being early. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I know what it's like. To... Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I got a big chocolate cake waiting for me at home. <laughs> I understand. All right. So reconsidering our budget for fiscal 26. I, I gave all of you a proposed budget change. We are, we can probably have the Union 32 football team come and paint the fence at Old Western Cemetery. They were very happy to do it at uh, Robinson. They'll hopefully do it at Old West Church. If that's the case, we aren't going to have to pay somebody to do that. We could strike the $10,000 item that we had in there for that painting. Anybody got a comment, thought? I think we should leave it in there until we have it definitely happen. And then if it does happen, then we'll have that to carry over. That way we're prepared just in case. Okay. Anybody else? I think that's a great idea. I do think that's a great idea. Okay. Even though, it make, you know, obviously makes it a bigger budget. Right. Mm -hmm. But hopefully it'll come back to us later. Correct. Then I guess I should have a motion to do that. I make the motion. Second. To what are we, what are we motioning? Mm -hmm. To leave that 10000 in the budget? Yes. yes. Okay. Do we have to make a motion on that? We haven't. Sherry made the motion. Right. But we almost don't need the motion if it's in there yeah, already. We haven't, we haven't approved it or approved taking it out, but it should be fine to stay. Without motion, right? Well, let's just say we made a motion to leave it in and be in the record. Okay. okay. Do we have a second? A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Then we leave it in there with a provision that if we don't use it, it will roll over into the next fiscal year. The second thing is to uh, have the $6,800 for the Ainsworth Cemetery fence. As we all know, we did a survey, and over two-thirds of the 91 people who responded wanted a wooden fence. So I have suggested we put that in the budget. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? I think it should stay, stay the 68. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, we might be able to get it done for less. That's right. an estimate. Right. We can visit that at some point. I forgot. I think there are three boards on that fence. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know if there are three yeah. or three. 
on that fence. If there were three, we could put it back to two. Well, I think there were only two on the Ainsworth fence, but I I'm will sure both think, um, as opposed to the three on the Robinson, are there three in the Old West? Four. Oh, sweet mother of pearl. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I. There could be three, but those granite um, posts are not really tall down there. At the, yeah, I think it was old. We'll see about that. All right. Okay. Yeah, we will see about that. Right. Yeah. So at the moment, the estimate from Joe is sixty-eight hundred. We want that in there because people want the fence, and if they decide at town meeting that that's too much money, they can tell us they won't give it to us. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So we will just leave that as it is. Okay. Any other suggestions on this budget? We've got supplies well up there because we'll need the, the uh, paint for the fence. Miscellaneous is pretty much, at, well, actually it's more than it was last year, I believe. And the miscellaneous includes those things that happen like trees coming down across the road that we just never know are gonna happen. Mm -hmm. um, I do have a question on the hedge trimming. Weren't we doing 3,500 a year and doing one side each year, not doing both sides previously? Uh, I believe we, I think the last budget was $7,000, half in the spring, half in the fall. Okay, maybe that's what it was. I knew yeah. it was split in half, but I. And I have a question about that that I'll ask later. And the key road price distribution, Carrie, have you got an exact number on the key row price distribution for 2026? No, um, because Rodney Buck said that traditionally I make that calculation on October 31st. So it's okay. in my calendar to do that next week, and I will email you and the trustees as soon as I as I have that number. Okay. So this number we put in here was Rod's rough estimate the last yeah. time I talked to him. Yeah. So I'll tweak that number correctly and at that point I'll send the budget in. Okay. And okay. Um, that will be obviously after the next select board meeting. So you'll want to present, well, we'll have your final number for the select board meeting after that, but you've already, you've already talked about your budget. Yeah, we got it. So the last item on the agenda is to talk about the current budget, which is a mess. We got two bills from the section, one for about $6,300 to repair, reset, and clean stones in the uh, Poplar Hill Cemetery. And I am told by previous member that it had been an agreement that every year the section would do that in one cemetery. I don't know. I knew nothing about it. Right. Juanita might have known. But all of a sudden we got that bill and it's done. The second one was 9,000 some odd dollars for corner markers. We have been including corner markers in the lot price for years. And as we all know, we changed that a couple of months ago. So those are no longer part of the lot price, which has to go into our endowment. So all of a sudden we get a bill for all of the corner markers that have been bought and installed for some time. So suddenly there's close to $16,000 that we did not have in a budget. I don't know what we can do about that. So when you say, excuse me, when you say for some time, what what is the parameter of dates for the corner markers being purchased and wouldn't they have already been charged out until say the last couple of months when we decided to switch over yeah i don't know how far back that goes all right so that's a sexton question yeah right i gotta ask him about that okay but he's done those things. He's bought the markers, he's installed them, he's built us, we've paid him because we really don't have a choice. But we are now some $16,000 over our budget. I have 
happened this year? That because of the coronavirus. Because that should have been done all along. Yeah. And I yeah. thought that it happened every time that you did a burial. I thought that was included. Do you have any insight into well, that? Well, we, we were eating the cost every yeah. time, no. right? Yeah. No, I've not been involved with the detail of the uh, operations. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I didn't have any of the bills had said like corner posts on them. Yeah, but the burial the expense doesn't include the corner posts. That's just now. the burial. Now. Just now, like two months ago. Yeah, now it will. And we won't need to know about it because the lot owner has got to either buy those stones and have the sexton put them in or have the sexton buy those stones and put them in. We don't need to do anything about it anymore. Well, it sounds like we didn't do anything about it for a while if they're $16,000. So, like, that's why I'm that's a very, very confused because I thought that those were included in a burial price. Me too. Yeah, yeah. but and wasn't that money yeah. put into? They're, they're in, they were included in the price of the lot. Okay, okay, sorry. Which goes into the endowment, so we never got to use it. That's why we changed our billing process. <laughs> we no longer include the cornerstones in the lot price. They're additional. Right, so the night, so the sixteen thousand. I can't believe there have been that many burials. It's about ninety three hundred, not sixty. The other sixty three hundred. Oh, oh, nine thousand. Okay, right. Sorry, you were adding the poplar in that. Right. I apologize. Do you remember the cost of the four corner markers when it was included in the price? Do you remember what that was? It varied depending on what people wanted. I thought it was just no, a, it was pretty much just a, a block. Thing. Joe had told us somewhere around three hundred dollars each. No, I thought it was three hundred dollars for the four. I did too. All so right, that, that'd be yeah. three hundred bucks a piece is a lot. Yeah, that's right. Like I thought it was three hundred for the four of them. Yeah, yeah. seventy-five for the four of them, and then yeah. what seventy-five dollars or something to put them in. Just not digging four holes and putting them in. But the good part of this, if there is a good part of this, is that he will not do anything other than his contract work in the future without our permission, other than emergency work. And there will never be another issue with corner markers because they have to be bought and paid for by the lot purchaser. Has, so, has he billed us for this? Have we paid for that already? The 9300 or whatever? Yeah, we paid for it. I, we need more information from him on this. Do you? What do you think, Curry? Because you handle the financial stuff. Do you think that we just pay it and well, move forward? I have two thoughts, at least. Um, one is, so this is a function of the transition, and unfortunately, the it wasn't handled in an ideal way. It would have been great to just settle up with those corner markers from the past before moving into this new scheme. Um, but at least it's a one-time expense. Like we just have to absorb this expense and then in the future, we don't expect to have this particular problem. Um, and given that it's, um, we've been generating revenue that we put into the endowment and then we're incurring this rather large expense as a function of that, you know, gaining that revenue. Um, I think it's a reasonable appeal to the trustees to say, listen, we did, you know, we could have handled this better, but but the nature of it is that, um, you know, we, we, you know, we incurred this expense in order to build the, the endowment. Can we draw on the endowment a little extra to, to even things out? And, you know, I don't know exactly, I, I haven't studied the, the rules and the, you know, the, if there's bylaws around the endowment, but I, I assume the trustees have some discretion in, in making um, one-time distributions. So it's worth, it's worth a conversation with, with Rodney, I would think. I'm happy to help out with that. I asked him that in a conversation and he said, no, because we're not allowed to do anything that would reduce it beyond the percentage that it's agreed we can take out. Mm -hmm. wow. But we could do a formal appeal to them and say, look, this is a one-time special problem. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, because well, the 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 only other option is to, you know, deficit spending. And 
it, it was really no great solution. I don't, you know, that, that is, that is what it is. Um, and maybe, maybe that will be where we end up is just showing a, a loss for the, for the year. Um, and that will come out of, I assume the town will have to make that up. It'll come out of the general fund. Um, I, I can't, you know, there's no other reserve fund to draw on. So it's, it'll just be a loss. So, I, so those are my thoughts. I, unless someone else has a more creative solution, I think we've, we've got two avenues here. Uh, I do have a question. Is, are those numbers, the 16 whatever, between the poplar and the corner markers, are they represented here in the budget? No. So this just came up. This is all extra. Yeah, this we talked about it a little bit last time. Not last time. time. Okay. But not, not, okay. I, I guess I didn't, it didn't sink in. Okay. But, but in order well, for that to. Sorry, if I can just chime in. If you're looking at the most recent financial statement, it's shown in the actual year to date. And, you know, what's alarming about that is when we add the warrant that you approve tonight, okay. you're going to be essentially at budget for the year for your expenses. Yeah. yeah. We just started in July. Right. That's, right. We're only a third so of the way through and we're at budget. Now, you know, I don't know how much you you have left. Obviously, you have some some of the sexton and and uh, a good number good amount of mowing contract. Um, everything else is more or less been spent. I hope based on what I'm seeing in, in you know the budget. Um, perhaps you can appeal to your sexton and 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 manage that number and say, hey, can we can we reduce the scope? I, I don't know what what you can do in terms of you know, operational management here, but anything you can do to reduce your spending for the rest of the year will be helpful. I'd like to know when it was incurred because if it was incurred over the last five years and we're paying for it all now, because there's no way that we got to $9,000 that's that quickly. If you figure 300 for the corner post plus 75, 375 per burial and into 9,000, is okay. so like 30, 27, 20. 30 burials? Yeah. I, well, you you need to have Joe in. I you know I um I don't just you know I don't scrutinize the the right. invoices at all. I just I'm just. Well, I mean that's the hard part. Clearly, nobody we haven't. So like that would have been a big one anyway. So when Joe gives us a bill, like sends it in for us to approve, do we have like, any receipts from what he spent, or just the actual bill? This bill right here. So he right. twenty-eight blank sets of four corner posts at two fifty each. Um, one set of corner posts with some other different marking for two fifty. One <laughs> other different marking for two fifty, and thirty sets of posts installed at sixty dollars a set. That's. What it is. So 30 corner, 30 sets of corner posts. Yeah, 30, 30 sets of corner posts. Have we had 30 burials in this year? I guarantee we haven't. I wouldn't think so. Or is this stock that he's getting ahead of time for the, him to sell to the new people that buy? But right. that's going to be on us. Though. Right. That's what I'm wondering. Is it? Is it like he's got it ready for yeah, when he buys it? He can't be buying them ahead because he knows that we don't pay for them ahead. Right. So this has got to be the 30 burials in the past. Yeah, that's it can't be in a year though, which means it shouldn't be applied to this year's budget. It should have been over the time period that it's happening. You should have billed us during that budget year. And that's why we're so far over. Because I think maybe, maybe 10, 15 a year, Maybe it makes sense. We yeah, have it. That's two or three years. Especially with all the green burials, which I don't think have corner posts. So I, I think they all have to. I think they all have to just to mark out the spot. Oh, like well there. then, in which case, I do think he's done quite a few green burials this past year. Is he? I say 10 green burials would be my guess. Yeah. I will find out from him how far back does that go. Right. But ouch. Yeah. So, Carrie, going back to uh, seeing if we can get more money out of the trust, 
Should we arrange a meeting with Rod, maybe you and Rod and us or me, and just say, here's the facts. Can we yeah. get a dispensation? Yeah, yeah, I think that that's the, clearly the thing to do, the next step. And yeah. and I, I would defend it. I think, you know, it, you know, you, you guys are part-time managers of this thing, and it, 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 this crept up on you. You didn't anticipate this no. happening. It's a one-time expense. It's connected to revenue that went into the endowment. I think it makes, if if we have discretion, I think it makes a lot of sense um, for some of the money to come out of the endowment and, and help cover this expense for the year. Yeah, because the money for this all went into the endowment. <laughs> yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Would it be best to have him come to a meeting of us or just you and somebody from the commission, I assume myself and Rob? Yeah, I mean, I think the three of us and anybody else you think is appropriate, but uh, I imagine smaller is better in this case. And we could do it in person or in, by Zoom or whatever, whatever you think. Yeah. That'd be great because that would fill, that would fill three quarters of the hole that we have right now. The 6,300 for doing stones and so forth. It may well be that he was under the impression that he should have been doing that, but we were not aware of it and therefore it wasn't in a budget anymore. But that'd be a lot easier for the general fund to absorb than the 16,000. Yeah. Yeah. Anything you can do. And, and again, including reducing spending for the rest of the year. I know it's a contract, but I hopefully you can appeal to Joe and say, hey, listen, what what creative solutions do we have to get through the rest of this year with limiting limiting the bleeding, so to speak? Right. Well, the other part of it is I'm just seeing that invoice about the Ainsworth fence. That was eight hundred and fifty dollars for to take it down and burn it or whatever he did with it. Eight hundred and fifty dollars that we were not anticipating that we did not know was coming. No, and so, I think some of that stuff, you know, we could probably appeal to, you know, someone, hey, listen, does anyone want to take this down? No, it's already been done. It's been done. No, but I mean, you, you know what I mean? Instead of just him doing it and targeting us for it. Yeah, I mean, it seems like a, that should be. Yeah, we be could put some about. of these things up to bid. Yeah. We yeah, did yeah, ask him to take about. it down. We leave this in the minutes of a couple of meetings ago. We said, it looked ugly. Take it down. Oh, you talked to him before the meeting and told him to take it down. And then we talked about it after. Okay. So I will call Rod and say, can we, the three of us, have a meeting and talk about this? Yeah, great. And yeah, and I, I don't really know what your relationship with Joe is, but I think this is an opportunity to strengthen the partnership. I mean, he knows. He needs to know that you're on a limited budget and, you know, we, if it's not in the budget, we can't really absorb it much at all. There, I mean, we just don't have a lot of flexibility. So he needs to be aware of that and, and you know, all be on the same page. And when you have these unplanned expenses, which are some of them are unavoidable, but this probably was avoidable, I guess, is my point. Yeah, yeah. if we had really been thinking about what was going on, Okay, what happened to that three hundred and sixty dollars for every set of corner posts? Yeah. Well, well, and skip the cleaning of stones this year because things are tight. So those are yeah, we'll need to. Yeah. I wish I knew someone with a portable mill that could just mill out some boards, but they'd have to be pressure treated too. So. Yeah. Did we get an invoice from him for those corner posts? From him. Uh, I didn't get an invoice from wherever he bought them. It's here in the bills with the warrant that went with it. Mm, was that last time that you saw that? Must be. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm keeping a file of all of the bills and all of the warrants that go with those bills. Perfect. That's very good to do. Did we have money left from last fiscal year? Yes, and that's in. It rolled into this you year. You see that this is, is a rollover. 
Okay. Yeah. Do you want to look at that? Thank you. Thank you. So while that is being looked at, Harry, you sent me something this afternoon. You said we're $3,500 over on the tree and hedge trimming. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how that happens. Okay. Um, I'll have to um, dig up the invoices or the payments. Um, yeah. When I so when I get to the office, I don't I, I don't have access to that level of detail right now, but okay. it sounds sounds from earlier the discussion was thirty five hundred covers one side. It sounds like it got doubled up, and I I, I don't remember what the when that when those bills were. Um, yeah, was. I'm just wondering if maybe one of those thirty five hundreds was the last part of twenty twenty three. Could be. Because we expect um, half of it now and then half of it next summer. We're we're on a cash basis, so it's no. we're not accrual. So if it ha if the work happened in June and should have been paid based on June, that's not how it works in Callis. It's when we see the the invoice. Yeah, and if it was late June, it might have got paid in July. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's not the one. Yeah, that's a different one. Okay, anything else that anybody wants to talk about regarding the budget? Because I believe that Laura asked Kari to be here to explain a few things about our categories. Anything else budget-wise? I just wanted to see if Kari would explain this fiscal year versus last fiscal year with the stuff we were looking at last time. Remember there was so much confusion about what was this fiscal year? What was that fiscal year? When we were, do you remember the mm -hmm. last meeting? Yeah. There was two pages, and we were all kind of like, "What's you, FY twenty four? What's FY twenty five? I'm sorry, you're, you're going to have to remind me because I just, you know, there, there's so I've absorbed so many details, and so much has washed over me too. It's hard for but, me to remember the specifics of that conversation, but it it may relate to the point I just made, which is. We pay bills based on when they come in. It doesn't matter when the work happened. When when the bill is received, we count count it as part of that period that we're, that we're in. So just keep that in mind as we're having this this discussion. Okay. Yeah, that matters. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I don't know. I I don't have the papers anymore from the last right. one, but right. We had the that one that you had written yourself, and we were trying to figure out. FY25 is what we're in right now, right? Yes, from July 24 to June 25. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, we are going to be, we're already going to be over budget. We're very close to yes. it. There's no way we can yeah. our contracts. So, so keep in mind that that includes 3,400 of uh, burial expenses, which you don't budget for be because it's too hard to predict. And you get yeah. some rev you get revenue to offset that, so you're expected to go over your expense budget to 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 the extent that you have burials. So so it's not quite as bad, but I would say it's pretty bad because you're already at basically at budget a third of the way through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you look at this, the burial expenses were thirty four hundred. The burial receipts were thirty seven fifty because we make money on burials. That's why it really doesn't make any sense to worry about budgeting for burial expenses. Yeah, it's all gravy, basically. If yeah. It's the but. cemetery keep up that's the kicker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which I feel like we've done really well at really doing all of that work at surveying what needed to be done and looking at it. and. Um, but I think it's painful to look at the budget and know that, well, this, you know, this early summer, we were like, let's hold off on that. Let's hold off on that. And then come what August 1st or July 31st, whatever the date is, then there's the influx of, all right, we held off on that. Um, but to be thinking about next year is 
Yeah, financially daunting right now. And to think about taxpayers are going to get this in the right. town report, and they're not going to understand that burial receipts are offsetting that burial expense because they're not in the same place. So the average person looking at this paperwork is going to say, why is there a zero in the budget, but they actually spent 3500 and why is burial receipts at the bottom? You know what I'm saying? There's nothing connecting those, so it looks like we're just not budgeting right now. When we do a report that goes into the town report, maybe we can explain that. We should. Mm -hmm. Be right there. And, and if anybody asks a question at town meeting, one of us can stand up and say, this is what happens. Right. If you can tell us how many people are going to die next fiscal year, we'll be very happy to budget yeah. and how they're going to be buried. Right. So I, I, I agree that it can be explained verbally and in text. And I think we can also present these numbers with the revenue. I forget what the town report looked like for cemetery, but we can present it in a way where it's not as bad if you see if you see good revenue coming in. Um, and then if that is but that point is also an argument for making some sort of estimate for burial expenses and burial revenue. So mm -hmm. that it doesn't doesn't look like you don't know what you're doing, you know. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. You budgeted zero, but you have thousands. What you know? Why would you do that? It doesn't make sense to the layperson. Exactly. Well, here's the uh, the proposed budget. Uh, it could be a line that says burial expenses, and the next line down could be burial receipts. But that's not a that's not part of the budget. But it can be. We can present it in that way in the future. We can. Yeah. Yeah. What, Michael, let's talk about that offline and then just, it's just a presentation more than anything. Just right. a matter of formatting. Well, yeah. yeah. BR. Yes. <laughs> Making sure things make sense to the taxpayer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think that's all that I really had for yeah. you, Kari, at this point. And my only question was the fact that we appear to be 3,500 over on the, uh, the hedge trimming. And I think that's just a bookkeeping. Okay. Would it help? Would it help when we send a bill in that we just noted what this year is supposed to be? Um, well, it the way that only... would help is it would prompt a conversation with you saying, if that's not accurate, I would tell you what it's going to be because we don't have, again, we're not on a cruel basis. I can't go back to last year and say, I should have booked this last month or last year. It's just that we're on a cash basis, so it's just bills come in, we pay them, and they're accounted for then. I think Joe knows that because we've talked before about having him right around when it was time for the budget to switch yeah. over, about him submitting something before July 1st and then holding off to submit yeah. after July 1st so that it would come out of the... So yeah. I think Joe understands how that yeah. all works. Yeah. Not, and, not saying and, that... You know, a lot of that. expenses that happen at, on a regular basis... <laughs> It doesn't matter because you'll just make it up the next year. It's the same cycle over and over. But if you have less frequent expenses or one-time expenses, it's worth thinking about when, if you have flexibility, when can you have the work done and then billed and then paid for in, in the way you want. Right. Right. Yeah, we had quite a bit this year. Two fences. And... But we had eight, what, 8,000 something carried over from from before July yeah, until this year. 15. So no, I'm sorry. Um, well, so 81 yeah. Yeah. Well, it came from from June 30th and before. We had eight thousand dollars left, and then it got added to this year. So if I was not a cemetery commissioner and I was just looking at this, I would say, why did they ask for so much when they didn't even spend eight thousand of it? Why do they need as much this year? You right. know what I mean? So it's good to try to get it as close to what we're actually going to need as we can so that we don't have that carryover so it doesn't look like we right are except just... for the ten thousand that we hope we carry over right well not and that, in... that's going to be explained too in our report right and if we carry it over and we can find a way to not send it then we, we should do the next year budget football team out in front of that fence right yeah. it was a good pair well, I think we're getting a handle on it, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be able to say the next couple of years are going to be better because we are keeping track of this a lot better than we have been in the past. Yeah. You're the next chair. No, no. <laughs> I don't sit at the front of the class. 
Anything helps anybody wants to add? Good one. Um, no. We good? Yeah. And if there's nothing else, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned.